Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be installing a homemade gooseneck hitch on my first gen Dodge Cummins. Now any of you guys that have one of these trucks, you know that it's nearly impossible to easily install a gooseneck hitch. And the reason that is, is the part of the frame that's right above the axle, which is where the hitch would be, there's no space between the top of the frame and the bed. The bed actually rests right on the frame here, so you can't use or uh, use the standard method of just putting a piece of plate steel across or channel iron or something because there's no space for it. And you can't lift the bed up and use spacers because the body lines of the bed and the cab will not line up and they'll just look like crap. So I would have bought a factory hitch if the only available hitch wasn't $430 from, uh, I don't know, b and I think. You know, if it was 200 bucks, 250 I would have bought it, saved myself the trouble, but for $430, I got better ways to spend that. So this is my plan of attack. I have two of these pieces of angle iron. This is three inch by three inch by half inch. Well over strength for whatever I'm ever going to pull with this truck. And they're going to be mounted on the inside of the frame like so. And then I'll bridge the gap between the two pieces of angle iron with a piece of a three quarter inch thick by seven inch wide plate steel. And on the underside of that piece of plate steel, I'm going to reinforce it with some box tube, which I think is completely unnecessary, but you know, why not? And everything will be bolted. I don't want any welds on this except for the box tube onto the piece of plate steel just for reinforcement. But I don't want any welds. I want everything bolted because there's a lot of engineering that goes into those bolts. And they're all pretty much the same strength and uniform. But a weld, especially a, a shade tree welder like myself, I think I have good welds, but I don't want to make a hitch. I don't want to weld a hitch. So the first challenge that I encountered. Um, you wouldn't encounter this, I guess, if you used a thinner piece of angle iron or not as wide, but I was mocking up the piece of angle iron here, and to do that, I'm not on perfectly level ground, so I used a, a level on this straight piece of frame to determine what angle my frame was at, and then I used this clamp to loosely clamp that piece of angle iron in, and I used the level and made sure that this piece of angle iron was the same uh, levelness as the frame. It was parallel to the frame, let's say that. But with the angle iron uh, aligned up about like that, you see on this side here, there isn't quite enough clearance between the top of the angle iron and the frame for a piece of three quarter inch plate to fit. So, what I did, you may not have to do this if you use a different piece of angle iron, but this is the uh, footprint of that piece of angle iron, and I cut a curve in it to fit in the arch here. And it drops it down just enough where it should fit. So I'm going to make a cut on that piece of angle iron and test it again. All right, here's my piece of angle iron a couple minutes of grinding later. You can see that faint chalk line there. That's where the top edge of the angle iron used to be. So it's dropped it down, I don't know, three eighths of an inch or so. So I'm going to verify that this is a level or a level with the frame in, in uh, respect to the frame. And then I'm going to use a, uh, a center punch or a transfer punch, whatever those are called. There happens to be two holes in the frame. There's this one here and this one here, which I will use for bolts. And I'll also choose a location somewhere around there in the middle for a third bolt. So I have the angle iron drilled, uh, all three holes, and I bolted it through the two existing stock holes. And now I'll uh, tighten it down temporarily and use the angle iron as a jig to uh, drill a third hole through the frame. 
And also I did one other thing that I'll show you on the other side of the frame. You see this plate here that I also drilled with the three holes and there's the nuts from the bolts coming through. And my idea behind this plate is that I was, I was just going to use washers behind these three nuts. But I said, you know what? Just to make it extra sturdy, I'm going to make essentially one giant washer, which is that plate. So that plate will evenly distribute the force of these three, these three bolts over this entire section of frame. Again, potentially overbuilt, but I'd rather overbuild than underbuild, and it really wasn't that much extra problem at all. This is a piece of uh, quarter-inch plate. Okay, so I clamped everything up, checked the levelness of the, uh, of the pieces of angle iron, and drilled that last middle hole through the frame using, using the, uh, the already drilled hole as a guide. Now the next step is to determine the maximum length of the piece of plate that'll go across there. Because obviously you can't put on, uh, install a plate the width of the frame because you wouldn't be able to slide the plate in between the, uh, the C channel. For example, here's a piece of wood that's almost the size of what I'm working with. So what you have to do, the best way is to drop it in this way and then rotate it into the frame. Then now you, now you see it's, it, it's sitting on the C channel there. But we want to determine what's the maximum length that we can, that we can put in. And the way we figure that out is that the longest, the largest dimension of this, of this piece here is from one corner to its opposite corner. Anything longer, anything larger, any dimension between those two points larger than the width, the inside width of the frame from one web to the other web, you won't be able to rotate this piece into position. So, I've already measured the, the inside width of the frame, and it's about uh, 37 and a half inches. Well, here's the plate of steel I'm going to use. It's uh, about six and three quarter by three quarter thick. So like I said, from one corner to the other, I want it to be no more than 37 and a half inches. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tape measure on one corner carefully and measure 37 and a half inches over and make a mark. And at that mark, I'll use a square make a square, uh, a perpendicular line rather, and cut it there. All right, so here's the uh, the plate just resting in place. I uh, cut it, it didn't take too long, it wasn't as bad as I thought with the angle grinder. But uh, one thing to mention, I think the width of the frame here was a little bit wider than the width over here. So uh, when I slipped it into place over here, there was about an inch extra extra length between the end of the plate and the frame. But over here with it with it sitting in place, let's see if you can see. See it's right up against the frame side of the frame there. Oof. And it's got about a quarter inch of clearance over there. So that's that's perfect. That's resting on there real nice. The other thing that I forgot to mention earlier uh, is that, uh, let's see, that cross member there used to be right about here, and that was the uh, upper shock mount. Go down to the shock mounts down there. And of course this hitch interfered with it. So what I'm going to do, I obviously took it off, and I'm going to relocate it back just the hair. I'm going to get it as close to the original position as possible. You see this hole here was the was that was that hole there. So I'm going to have to move it back just just a little bit. I don't think that should make uh, an, any 
effect at all on the performance of the shocks or anything. I don't think it should be a problem. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to drill holes. In this, in this piece, I'm going to drill the center hole for the, for the hitch ball. I'm going to drill three holes here and three holes here, all half-inch holes. And then I'm going to mock it up on here and then mark where the holes will go on those angle irons. Well, I got the holes drilled on the plate. And uh, for those of you wondering how to drill that big-ass hole in the middle, the standard old hole saw works just fine. I just broke through. This is a... Well, that's still pretty hot. That's just a Walmart uh, hole, hole saw. I bought a set of four for um, eight, $8.88. And uh, yeah, it took a little, took a little doing. Used plenty of, plenty of oil, but it cuts through just fine. Okay, so I've got the, the ball, uh, bolted onto the plate here. I did put two little tack welds on either side, just uh, to prevent this ball from spinning when I, when I tighten the nut down. Um, all I did is I, I just put the knot on tight without the lock washer, cranked it down nice and tight so when I put the tack welds on it wouldn't warp one way or the other. And uh, so now I'm going to tighten this nut to 450 foot-pounds. That's what it says on the uh, number six there. And that's, a, that's a lot of torque. So how am I going to get... 450 foot-pounds on that. I sure as hell don't have a torque wrench that goes up that high, so uh, for those of you that don't know how to do something like this, pay attention. It's pretty simple. This is one of those things that they taught you in physics class in high school, but you didn't listen to it probably. Um, torque is equal to force times distance. So some simple algebra, you want to do 450 foot-pounds, and you need to put some sort of a known force on the on the handle of your wrench so i weigh 140 pounds so i figure if i just stand on or hang off the end of the wrench that's a pretty um easy weight to use so we're going to use 140 pounds for the force but you don't know what distance what length of a lever of a uh, what length of a wrench handle you want to use so simple algebra you divide so you so the pounds cancel out and you just get feet so 3.2 feet is the is the distance is the the length of the handle you want so all I'm gonna do put this guy on there get a pipe 3.2 feet more or less and I'm just gonna put my body weight into it and maybe a little more for for good measure and the other thing on the uh, on this tag here it says check torque before each use well you know it that's really not possible and of course they put that there just for a liability too i'm sure but anyway what i'm going to do i'm just going to tack weld this nut just like i tack welded the, the ball here not a lot not a lot of weld you don't want to put glob it up with weld because that will um harm the the internal structural integrity of the metal but just a nice healthy tack weld, maybe one on each side, just to prevent it from moving. So you're never going to lose lose your torque. Because there's no way you're going to get under the truck and recheck 450 foot-pounds every time you hook up to a trailer. All right, now we're looking at the bottom side of my uh, gooseneck plate. And you see I welded these pieces of 2 by 3 by quarter inch wall uh, square tube on as reinforcement. I only uh, stitch welded it. I didn't think it was necessary to weld it completely. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people will say that these reinforcements are completely unnecessary. But, you know, I, it, it, it's cheap insurance to me. I don't think it really will affect anything negatively at all. And it was only a couple minutes of work. All right, so here's the uh, gooseneck hitch kind of mocked up. I welded everything. I welded these these uh, D-rings on for the safety chain. The ball was torqued down and I welded on those reinforcement pieces. So I slid it in in between the frame and I'm going to center everything up. 
and uh, I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm going to get in there somehow and mark through these holes, mark onto this piece of angle iron where these holes are, and I'll then slide this off, unbolt the uh, pieces of angle iron, and drill it with a slightly oversized hole so I ha give myself some leeway for uh, alignment, and then I'll paint them and then bolt them back up. So I'm going to transfer the location of these three holes in the gooseneck plate onto the angle iron with this bent piece of wire here. It's actually not, uh, just a pe uh, round stock with a point on it. And I'm uh, just going to scrape it like that. It's really not making an indentation or a real big scrape, but it's going to make enough of a mark to, uh, to be noticeable. So I'll just look at it real carefully when I get it on the bench and I will uh, make a find the center of, of that mark and I'll punch it with a center punch and then drill it. So these are the marks that were made. So you see it came out really well. As long as you're in the right light, sometimes they'll disappear like that. But anyway, I'm, I'm just going to use a, uh, a set of calipers. I'm going to measure the diameter, have that to get the, the radius, and uh, I'll use these incorrectly, as I'm sure some machinists will notice. And I'll kind of use it as a uh, compass, and I'll make a mark like that, and go in from the other side and do the same thing. And then the, the scrape marks that I make in the middle of the circle will intersect at the center of the circle. All right, so it's in. Here's an idea of what it looks like. I'll bolt it up. It uh, required a little bit of fiddling with these bolts here see there there's very little clearance so I had to I had to trim some of these and also there's an issue with the clearance with uh, that bolt head there and that bolt thread there if, uh, if I if I use shorter bolts it would have been okay but um anyway it went together pretty well just a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle now you'll notice that the only place I have washers is right there. No washers there. No washers there. And the reason is all the holes that I drilled are exactly a half inch in diameter. And these bolts are a half inch in diameter. The only holes that are oversize are the holes that I drilled in this in this uh, angle iron here on, on the horizontal portion because I needed just a little bit of wiggle room because I wasn't being very accurate when I was marking the holes from this plate onto that piece of angle iron. And those holes were 590 thousandths in diameter because it was a, I happened to have a 15 millimeter drill and uh, it's the only thing that big that I had so it turned out to be a good size. And the the, the washers that I have, they're nice washers, but the ID of the washer is 570 thousandths. So I didn't see any reason to put a washer with a 570 thou ID on a bolt that's going through a hole that's exactly 500 thou, or maybe 501 you know, or 2 or something like that. So I didn't see any reason in it. So I did not use them. But I did use them on the underside here because uh, that's 76, uh, you know, 20, uh, 20 thou smaller of a hole for that washer. Or rather, the, the washer compared to the hole that's going through. So I figure, why not? I'll put the put the washer on there. So that's all there is to it. Okay, everybody. This is how I modified the. The cross member, really simple. I just heated up with my torch and bent this ear over. I did the same on the other side, and that's because this ear is really what interfered with the with the hitch. And uh, so I'll show you what it looks like when it goes in. And so I just slid it in. Now keep in mind this hole here is the hole that that originally went through. So now if I lift this up. Uh, 
and slide it over. See the the center of this cross member, which is where the hole is, is only about uh I don't know, an inch, inch and a half further back that way. And uh I dropped the plumb bob real quick and it seemed like this point about here was actually directly above that shock mount rather than there. I assume that mount is a little bit forward because the axle pivots on the front of the leaf spring so it travels up this way not straight up and down but I'm not like I said I'm not concerned at all about that small movement so I'm not going to show you how I do the rest of it obviously I gotta repaint that because I ruined the paint from the heat from the torch I'm gonna clamp this up drill holes bolt it um, nothing fancy there I'm not gonna show you the end result because I'm sure I'm sure you can figure it out on your own but that's the meat of it and I think this came out pretty well I would not hesitate to pull anything with this hitch it looks it's definitely solid I think it's the most solid part about the entire frame oh and one other thing you guys might be wondering you you might have noticed this uh, it's a threaded stud that I welded on here it has nothing to do with the hitch um, as you see, I don't have any bump stops because they, they rotted off long ago. And I'm going to mount some new ones, but I don't feel like drilling holes through the frame for the for the uh, new bump stops. So I'm going to make a little bracket thing. And this is going to be the stud that the bracket's going to clamp to. So unrelated to the hitch, but it happened to be in a, in a convenient location. So that's why I put this here. So anyway, I don't know, that's that's about it. Huh? Just throughout give showing you every angle here. It wasn't too difficult. Just a little bit of little bit of fiddling was required to get these bolts lined up and tightened down. I just tightened them as tight as I could. I didn't use any Loctite or any anti seize or anything. I'm just relying on the torque and the and the nylock lock nuts. I think that should work fine. So I hope this helps out some of you guys. Oh, and one last thing, of course the ball is higher, uh, but the frame sits right on, or rather the, the bed sits right on top of the frame, so the ball is going to stick out into the bed a little bit. I'm not too concerned with it. It might bother some of you guys, and if it bothers you, get a get the B&W turnover ball hitch. It's 430 bucks. I didn't want to spend 430 bucks. So anyway, that's enough talking. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button and check out all my other first-gen Dodge Cummins videos. And leave a comment if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching, and as always, come back for more.